The Wandering Coach. Based on the original story by 22 Tesla, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. The Northwestern Railway had just been formed in 1915. The expense of Main Line, as well as the loop lines, reaching from Vickerstown to the end at Knapford, extending to Tidmouth, was going for a tough few years. The line's first two engines, Thomas and Edward, were too small to handle the workload. As such, the fat director had brought in two more engines named Henry and Gordon, as well as many more engines on loan from other railways in the mainland to help. And I'm sorry to say, frictions existed as some loaned engines, such as 87546, 98462, and Allied Greedy, treated the resident engines quite poorly. Oi! You! Take my coaches and hop to it! One engine would say. Hop to it yourself! I'm getting this train ready, Thomas scoffed. Hmm. Typical shunter. No sense of duty. Late again! I thought you're supposed to be an express engine, another engine wished. Don't blame me. It was a faulty signal, Edward huffed out of breath. Of course, it's always something else. You wouldn't have this kind of mess on the Northwestern Railway if your controller had any sense of progress. He'd allowed a head office to oversee anything. One of these engines was a large experimental prototype Clotin class from the LNWR in the mainland. This engine had glistening red paint with black side plates. He was named Afton and was more picky about the kind of coaches he was given. He saw all the old single axle coaching stock as relics. He was also appalled at the idea of pulling goods trains. Because to see a grand engine such as himself doing so was an insult. One morning, Afton pulled into Vickerstown Station. He was to be pulling the local stopping service today. But as he neared the station, he hissed angrily as he saw the coaches he'd been giving. He was given the small single axle coaches. While they were painted in the NWR cream and dark green, they were smaller and older than the bogey coaches given. What's this? he hissed. I'm pulling this ghastly groaning train today. The indignity of it all. Just be happy that you have a train to pull, Thomas hissed as he pushed the coaches. I had to hunt the yards for extra coaches. Then you can jolly well take these coaches away and bring me some proper coaches. I'm busy. Take them yourself or leave them. Thomas huffed and hurried away into the yards before Afton can say more. <sighs> Come on, old boy. Let's get this over with, Afton's driver sighed. The coaches groaned as Afton backed on them. They had heard Afton, and who had called the, what had called them, and were not happy. Who is this rude engine? asked the lead coach. An improper engine if he's pulling us, said another. I'd rather be pulled by Edward, or even Thomas. At least they are proper engines who know how to treat coaches right, the brake coach added. Shut up snapped Afton. I am a proper engine. Better than Tiny Thomas or Old Iron Edward. Now come along. The guard's whistle blew, and Afton huffed out of the station in a rage. His face was almost as red as his paint. As Afton raced down the line, the old coaches groaned and creaked. They are older and not used to running express speeds. They teared nervously as they rolled along. Slow down, slow down, they wailed. Shut up, shut up, Afton barked back.
Just then the brakes on the train came on. Afton stopped suddenly on the viaduct near Kronk, grumbling dreadfully. An investigation of the coaches showed that the front coach, just behind Afton, had a loose vacuum hose. While the crew set about fixing the problem, Afton fumed angrily. He thought the coaches were doing that on purpose, making him late. Eventually, the brakes came off and the train puffed away. When Afton arrived at the terminus at Knapford, the big red engine hissed mournfully as he moved around the yard to shunt his own coaches away. The coaches tittered grumpily as he did so. At last, the journey is over, one said. I felt my windows were going to fall out, said another. At least, at least you two were further away from him than I was. I had to put up with his groaning all the way here, said the lead coach. It would have been better if you decided not to hold me up, you rotten old antique, replied Afton. What? You blame me for that? It was, that was your fault, came another reply. Pull the other one, you horrid thing sneered Afton. It's not my fault. You do not know how to pull coaches properly, you rotten red sausage, the front coach sneered back. Afton quickly lost his temper. His boiler pressure shot up amid the hiss from his safety valve. There was a bang and a splintering crash. Afton hadn't been paying attention when he entered the carriage sightings and had run his coaches into the buffers hard. The buffers were bent and broken, but they were not the most damaged. That honor belonged the, to the coach behind Afton's tender. It was squashed between him and the second coach, crushed into a pile of splintered wood and bent metal. The other coaches shrieked in horror at the fate of her sister. Afton just sniffed indignantly. This is what you get for being weak old antiques, he said. If you'd only been proper coaches, this wouldn't have happened. The fat director was not happy with Afton's carelessness and spoke to him severely. If you were my engine, he said, I'd send you away. But Afton just sniffed. He didn't care at all. He watched as the broken coach was loaded into some trucks to be taken away. The other coaches were silent during the whole process. After a while, Afton just smirked and backed away to Vickerstown sheds to rest. Afton's driver was assigned to another engine to learn how to properly handle coaches and Afton himself was shut in the sheds for a few weeks until the fat director has allowed him to pull trains again. The other visiting engines, including Alec Greedy, 87546 and 9462, weren't the only ones to show any sympathy for Afton and his careless handling. During his stay in the shed, a new train was offered by the Northwestern Railway. It was a late night train that offered an express run to Nutford called the Midnight Special. The bigger tender engines enjoyed the job immensely. The idea of a non-stop uh, express run from one side of the island of Sodor to the other under stars made them feel very important. Soon. It was Afton's turn to pull the Midnight Special. About time that I had a name train of my own to pull, and with proper coaches and no less. The only thing better would be the Express, he said loudly. The other engines just groaned. They ignored the big red engine's boasting until he left the shed. Afton pulled into the station bubbling with excitement as he buffered up to the lead coach. He was so excited that he never looked back at the rake of coaches he wasn't pulling. 
No one noticed the coach closest between Afton and a luggage van didn't belong in the consist. It was painted gr cream and green, but it ha was smaller and had no bogies, just two axles. It was filthier and didn't look like a coach belonging to a prestigious train such as the Midnight Special. The guard blew his whistle and the train set off. Over the sound of Afton pulling, there was loud groaning. There was a loud groaning noise that came from the lead coach. It sounded like that it hadn't been oiled in a long time. Soon the express passed over the signals and was going in a cloud of steam. A phone rang in the signal box in Kelsthorpe. When the signalman answered it. It was a call from the signalman at Kildane. He wanted to know. He wanted to know if the midnight special had passed through to check that the system was still operating. The councillor signalman said he received a bell from the Crovensgate signal box a long time ago, but the express hadn't come yet. He checked his watch. The express was running half an hour behind. Just before the signalman could hang up the phone to call Crovin's gate to send out a works train to check the line, there was a knock on his door. He opened it to see the midnight special's guard standing there, pa panting heavily. Have you seen our engine? he asked. What's engine? came the reply. No engine has been passing by my, sing my box for half an hour. The guard then went pale. That's not possible. You must. That's. That's not possible. You must be mistaken. I've just come from the midnight special, and I have not seen our engine anywhere. I swear, me manners, there had been no train puffed past this signal box. I wouldn't have seen it. Replied the signalman. Come on, come on in here. You've been speaking all kinds of rubbish. I'm not," retorted the guard. "Our tr our entire train is missing our engine. It's just like he's disappeared." "Come on, mate," said the guard. "Said the signalman. Have a cup of tea and explain what you're trying to say." A works train was soon dispatched from Crovin's Gate. They found all six express coaches and the luggage vans sitting on the main line neatly, and the irate passengers. From passenger testimony, they said one moment the train was running smoothly, then, after the two-road tunnel near Balahu, the train went slower and slower until the coaches ground grounded to a halt. When the passengers looked out the windows to see what the problem was, they saw there was no engine at the front of their train. Workmen investigated the coaches for damage, but none was found. The coupling on the luggage van was intact. While the works engine pulled the train back into the station, the workmen searched up the line. Perhaps the engine had derailed somewhere, and the guard just missed. However, nothing, no trace of an engine or even an accident, could ever be found. The engine crew was found the next morning, asleep on a bench at Crovin's Gate by a cleaner. Making the rounds before the first service of the day. When asked how they got there, they had no memory of what happened after Afton had en entered the tunnel. Just that, one minute, they were entering the tunnel, and the next, they were waking up on the platform. A massive search was held to look for the engine, but nothing could be found. For a long time, the Midnight Express was discontinued, as the more superstitious passengers refused to ride the express after midnight, worried that if a whole engine could vanish, then wind out a whole train of passengers. The mystery deepened when many of the passengers expressed concerns for the people who might have gotten in the first coach. The investigators noted. That all the, pa the coaches were still on the train, but the passengers were insistent that a, that a coach was missing from the express, a small coach just behind Afton. 
The station staff, porters, and the engine crew of Thomas, who assembled the train, who had gathered the rake of six express coaches, plus one luggage van, no more, no less. After extensive investigations, relief was brought to the passengers to hear that everyone who had bought a ticket for the Midnight Express was accounted for. But the mystery remained. What happened to the Afton and the alleged coach? How could his crew wake up at Crovens Gate Station with no memory of how they'd gotten there? To this day, the file remains in the Vickerstown Police Files as unsolved. However, they say that whenever midnight draws in, you can hear the puffing and whistling of an engine speeding past with a single axle coach and disappearing into the two-road tunnel near Ballahoo without a trace.